Hi everyone, Haley here from The Foiled Plan. Today I am sharing a video with you that I have been wanting to share for such a long time. I've just not actually ever taken the time to sit down, make my list, put my thoughts together, and then film a video about it. I usually like to film tutorial videos and videos where I'm actually showing you how to do something, but this one is a little bit different. I am going to be listing off all of the things that I wish I knew when I first got my Cricut machine. So I got my Cricut machine in August of 2018, so I've had it for a couple of years now, and there's some things that I've learned over these past couple of years with this machine that would have been so beneficial had I known them when I first purchased it. So without further ado, let's get right into these things I wish I would have known when I first got my Cricut machine. Let's go. If you are already a foiled friend, thank you for joining me again today. And if you're new here, welcome. I share a lot of different content on my channel. Things like design videos, Cricut crafts, foiling, dollar store DIYs, epoxy tumblers, unboxings, and pretty much anything related to running a small creative business. So if that sort of content interests you, I encourage you to hit the subscribe button to become a foiled friend and turn the notification bell on so you never miss an uploaded video. Now that you know a little bit more about my channel, let's jump into today's video. So the machine that I have is the Cricut Explore Air 2. It's in the color Coral and I'm sure they still have this color option available. I purchased mine at Michael's. I'm from Ontario, Canada, so I was able to purchase from Michael's in store. And uh, so that's the machine that I have. I do not have the maker and I do not have the joy. And if you're interested, I can explain why I got this model over anything else when I was first deciding which machine I want, but that'll be a separate video. So number one is that you do not have to use Cricut brand products. I'm sure you can see behind me on my pegboard here that I do have quite a lot of products, but I'm talking about the vinyl, the HTV, which stands for heat transfer vinyl, which is interchangeable with iron-on. So iron-on and heat transfer vinyl, HTV, they're all the same thing. So you do not need to use crickets, vinyls, or um, iron-ons with this. You can use other things. There's a lot of great products that are out there and I'll be completely honest, I don't use any of the vinyl or I very rarely will use any of the vinyls or iron on that are Cricut branded. And it, it's not to say that they're bad products, they're just not my go-to. I have options that I prefer. And sometimes it is just a personal preference thing, but yeah, there's lots of other products out there that I prefer over the Cricut vinyls and, and things like that. So that's number one, you do not have to use strictly Cricut products when you purchase a Cricut cutter machine. All right, moving on, one of the biggest things that I did not know when I first purchased my Cricut was that you can reuse your transfer tape. So if you're not sure what transfer tape is, it's basically the, the clear piece that um, if you're working with adhesive vinyl, so if you're putting it on a cup or something like that, you cut your vinyl and then you use this transfer tape that's clear and you put it over top of your vinyl to peel it away from the backing sheet so that you can then apply it to whatever you're applying it to. So for instance, a mug, and then you would peel the transfer tape away. That transfer tape can be used multiple, multiple times. I did not know that. I went through so much transfer tape. You do not need to waste it. Use it as much as you can until it's not sticky enough to pull up vinyl anymore. So reuse your transfer tape. And that circles back to you don't have to use Cricut brand materials with your machine. The transfer tapes that I typically use are the masking transfer tapes, which are from Expressions Vinyl and they're sold on Shop Auntie Tay. Um, I have a link for those below if you're interested. I do love masking transfer tape. Um, and then also if you are looking for a clear transfer tape, I also really like the vivid transfer tape. So there's lots of options. And then also Oracle has some options. So you're not 
strictly only using Cricut products with this and you can reuse your transfer tape so many times. Don't waste it, it's expensive. Okay, next is just a pro tip in your mindset. So be patient with yourself and have the understanding that you are going to waste material and supplies. And I say waste in quotations because it's kind of up for debate whether or not you're actually wasting things because you're learning in the process, right? So, okay, maybe something didn't work out the way you wanted it to or your cut didn't go all the way through the vinyl like you had hoped, but you learned something from it and you're not gonna do that again, hopefully. I mean, honestly, I've made the same mistake multiple times before just because sometimes I can get careless or impatient and I just, go and start doing things. So with that, what I wish I'd known when I first got my Cricut was that I was going to waste material. Waste material. Um, but I was gonna learn from that. So have patience with yourself. Don't get too worked up. It's just crafting. It's not the end of the world if something goes a little bit awry. Even if you are a perfectionist to a fault like myself. So keep that in mind. Something else that I wish I had known when I started was that you do not need every single tool and supply just to get started. So I, I'm not sure if you saw my Cricut unboxing and first project video. It's pretty interesting to me to look back at that video and see how far I've come because I feel like I've come quite a long ways from that video. Um, but I, uh, I bought quite a lot of things. Some people might say, no, you didn't really buy that much. But in my opinion, I bought more than I needed. Um, my tools, this is still my original tool set that I purchased two years ago when I first got my Cricut. Um, I did actually do a video um, customizing these. So they do have purple tops now. But to be honest, I never use the spatula like ever. Uh, I've used my scoring tool like once or twice for cards and I didn't even use it in my machine. And then uh, my weeding tool, obviously that is what I use the most. So invest in a good weeding tool. It doesn't have to be Cricut brand. Mine is, but um, yeah, sometimes the tips over time can end up getting dull or bent. At that point, I would recommend upgrading. I'll be honest, I did just purchase a brand new weeding tool, so I'm excited about that. Uh, but it was more so because I do crafts in this room and then I also do crafts in the room next to this one. So rather than going from one room to the other, I just have two separate tools now. So it has nothing to do with this weeding tool not working anymore. And then I just have this small scraper. Um, it has seen better days. It has a chip out of the bottom of it, but I, I, I know there's the XL scraper and a lot of people absolutely love those, um, but I have made out completely fine just having the small one. I know there's also these little dish scrapers from Pampered Chef. They're brown. I mean, they're not glamorous, but they get the job done. A lot of people can use those as well. Um, or just um, like paint scrapers, anything like that that will do basically the same thing is completely fine. Uh, you don't need everything right when you first start. Oh, I also purchased like a bunch of Cricut mats and I didn't really need to right away. Um, the mat that it came with was the blue one, which is the, mostly for like paper crafts because it is the light grip mat. So that's something, this is like a side note. If you didn't know, the different colors of the Cricut mats determine which grip they are. So the light blue one is a light grip. The green mat is a standard grip. And then the purple mat is a strong grip. So you would use this for like fabrics and things like that that really need to be stuck down. Um, so that's another little aside moment there. Um, but I didn't need all of those right away. So you don't need all of those right away. It depends honestly what 
projects you plan to be completing and then get your supplies geared towards that. And then you can always expand your collection later on if you find that you need some more, but you don't need it all right away. While we're on tools and supplies, something that I would recommend getting though is a brayer. So the one that I have is from Fiskars. I have it linked in my Amazon shop. You can find my Amazon link below. Um, Cricut also has one. It's prettier than this one, I guess you could say, but uh, it is more expensive and I'm all about a deal. So as much as I love everything to be color coordinated and matchy matchy, I like a deal a little bit more than that. So get yourself a brayer. This is awesome for making sure everything is stuck down to your mat. Whatever brand you go with, get yourself a brayer. You can also get these in the stamping section at Michael's. Um, again, it's just a brayer, B-R-A-Y-E-R. -E one thing I will say about this one is um, the handle is definitely not as comfortable in your hand as the um, Cricut one, just because it has these harsh edges. So if you're like putting force into it, sometimes you can end up with like a line in your hand, but I only use it for like a couple seconds, so it's not that bad to me. Still on supplies, but we're diving a little bit deeper into the mats. So something that I did not know was that the mats can actually go into your machine two ways. So I'm just gonna open this so that you can see. So there is the top where it says Cricut, and then there is the hole to hang it up. So it can go in this way, or if you flip it around, it can also go in this way. So it, it physically won't fit in the machine if you turn it sideways, so it's pretty tough to mess it up. Um, but yeah, you can put it in with the hole going first or the other way, whichever you prefer. I have put things on when I first started I put things like on the bottom and I peeled them back off to then stick them over here because I was like ah it can't go in the machine that way yes it can <laughs> it's not a big deal so that's a little something and then also something else that I wish I had known was that the protective sheets that come with the mat they actually have two different sides it is so so hard to tell which is which but I'm telling you there's two different sides so in order to make sure that you're always making the same side attached to the sticky side when you store your mat what I like to do is add a little star or a little sticker to the front side of the mat. I'm not sure if you can see that from here, but there is a little blue star. So I always know that when I take this protective sheet off, when I go to put it back on, that blue star is going to face outwards. So that's just something to keep in mind when you are storing your mats. The only reason I don't have a protective sheet on the purple one right now is because my studio lights glare so bad off of the protective sheet. So I just take it off when I film videos. Something else I wish I had known when I first got my machine was that you can re-stick your mats. So just because it gets to the point where there is no stickage left on your mats when you touch it, it doesn't mean you can't bring them back to life. So there is plenty of YouTube videos out there explaining how to clean these. One of the most popular ways is to use one of the cleaning products that is sold at Dollar Tree and it's called LA's Awesome. I think it's, I think it's called Awesome Cleaner. LA's awesome, something along those lines. Um, but that is a great cleaner alert. Other folks like to use Mr. Clean Magic Erasers. There's lots of different op options out there. Do not throw out your mats. You can restick them. So no wasting, no wasting. While we're on supplies and tools, one thing that I wish I had known when I purchased my Cricut machine was that you can actually sharpen your blade. 
So to do that, you just take a ball of tin foil and scrunch it all up, and then you can use this little plungy thing here. So every time you push that, you can see the blade pops out the end. So if you just hold that in and very carefully push it into the ball of tin foil, that will sharpen the blade. I tend to do that if I am about to cut something that has a lot of intricate small details. So something that you can do to make your products last longer. Something else I wish I had known when I first bought my Cricut was that HTV or iron-on, heat transfer vinyl, it's all the same thing, it's not as scary as it seems. I was petrified of using HTV because I thought it's so much more permanent than adhesive vinyl and once you mess it up, it's messed up and there's no way to come back from it. It's not the case. There is ways to remove heat transfer vinyl from a garment or whatever you're putting it on. So it's, it's not as permanent as say sublimation. Um, but uh, yeah, don't be intimidated. Don't be intimidated by anything that you can do with the Cricut. Again, this is just crafting. We're all here to have fun. We might also be here to make some extra money on the side. There is lots of folks out there that are willing to help and provide knowledge like myself and share our experiences to help you guys. Especially heat transfer vinyl. If it's intimidating to you like it was for me, don't let it be. It's going to be okay. The first heat transfer vinyl that I actually used was Flocked, which I don't know that I would recommend starting out with that for your first try, but go big or go home. I tried Flock heat transfer vinyl and it was fine and it actually turned out really, really cute. So there was nothing to be stressed about. So you got this. Something that I wish I had known about this particular machine before or when I first purchased it was that print and cut only works on white paper. Now that might not matter at all to any of you guys watching this, but for me, I was hoping to be able to do uh, tent cards for like weddings and things like that. I do foiling as well, so I usually do like a, a couple of steps in my process. So what I wanted to do was print then cut on mauve paper on my Cricut and then bring my paper tent cards over to my mink machine so that I could then foil my design. But unfortunately the registration marks would not read on the mauve paper. So I had to get creative and figure out a solution to make that work, but that's something that you should know. I have heard that it is possible to do print and cut on colored paper on the maker. I cannot for sure say that that is 100% the truth because I've not tried it. I do not have a maker, but I know for a fact this machine, the Cricut Explore Air 2, does not print and cut on anything other than white. Some people can use like vellum or uh, different types of like clear paper, but again, you have to get creative for reading the registration marks. Yeah, I'll just leave it at that because that might not matter at all to some of you. So anyways, we'll move on. Something that I actually did not know for the longest time was what the dial actually meant. And I feel like I should do a separate video just on the dial because you can, there's a lot of information. <laughs> but basically there is material settings on the dial so you can turn the dial to set it to whatever material you're working on and then it's automatically selected in your program because the dial is set and basically they communicate back and forth with each other and they know, okay, I'm about to cut paper because I'm my dial is set on paper. For the longest time I did not know what the dots in between, so like the half steps in between each setting were for. The half steps indicate more or less pressure on a certain material. So if you're looking at the cardstock setting and you turn the dial one notch counter, no, one notch clockwise past that cardstock setting, that's going to be cutting with more pressure. And if you're on the cardstock, cardstock setting, but you bring it back counterclockwise one notch, then you're going to have less pressure. So then it 
communicates with the program, the program communicates with the machine, it knows which setting it's on, and it knows how deep to have your blade set. So that's something that I did not know until honestly probably like a year into using the machine. So that might be helpful for you guys. Now having said that, my next thing I wish I would have known when I first started using my machine is because I work with so many different materials and products, it works best to just leave the dial set on custom. So that way I'm always prompted to choose my material setting on the software. So whether I'm using my iPad or my PC or my MacBook or my iMac, like whatever I'm using to work the design state the design space software on it's going to prompt me to choose the material and that way i am not accidentally cutting on the wrong setting for what i'm working with just because it was already set and i didn't even think about it it's like squirrel i'm already off thinking about something else once this starts cutting something there's too much on the go for me to remember that, oh, I have to turn that dial again. So if you're always prompted and you have no choice but to select your material before you move forward, that saves you from wasting materials, or at least it saves me from wasting materials. So there's nothing worse than waiting for something to cut for like 15, 20 minutes, and then you finish and you realize it was on a like tissue paper setting when you were trying to cut through permanent outdoor vinyl, not good, <laughs> not good, big waste. So always, if you're working with lots of different materials, keep your dial set to custom. Thank me later. Another pro tip, I guess you could say, um, for saving material that I wish I would have known when I first got my machine is that when you have vinyl on a roll, you can load it onto your mat and still keep the roll attached and I would just maybe place a book or something underneath here so that the mat can slide a little bit more freely. Uh, it's, it's not completely touching the surface of your workstation. It's elevated slightly. And then once your piece is done cutting, then you can remove it and then cut out the piece that you need. So that way, I, like I found when I first started, what I was doing is I would look on the mat uh, in design space in the program and I would see okay it looks like I'm gonna need a piece that is at least three inches by three inches but there's always potential for it to be uh, the design to be like shifted slightly and maybe it's a little bit off so maybe I should do three and a quarter by three and a quarter or maybe even three and a half by three and a half well over time, when you keep having those extra bits of vinyl that you don't necessarily need, it adds up over time. So if you're only cutting off around the actual design, then you're wasting a lot less vinyl or whatever product or material you're working with. So cut and then cut it off the roll. That's if you're working with a roll. If you're working with a shit, uh, <laughs> If you're working with a sheet, uh, then of course you would just slap that sheet right down on the mat and then cut away and then cut around it. So that's a good way to save material. Okay, so one of the final things that uh, I am going to share with you today that I wish I knew when I first purchased my Cricut, you have to be a little bit careful with which videos you search for in your research to purchase any type of machine. So a lot of times people have sponsored posts or they're given product free from a company to review it or to share it on their page. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. I have done that before as well, T um, typically on my Instagram if I'm like trying out a product. But I will say I won't share a product unless I genuinely like it. Um, I can't say that that's the same for everyone, but that's just kind of how I roll. I don't want you guys to waste your money on something that I don't even like. And then it's going to come back to me anyways, because if you think it's a crap product, then you're going to be upset with me and I don't want that. Um, but yeah, just be careful the videos that you look for. So if you're watching a video that says um, which machine is better, uh, a silhouette or a cricket, 
and you scroll down in the description box of the video and you can see that the video was sponsored by Cricut or the video was sponsored by Silhouette, well, you can probably guess that the person making that video is gonna be geared more towards the one that sponsored that video, if that makes sense. So just something to keep in mind. They're all great machines. They are all great machines. And there's lots of amazing materials out there for these machines. Um, but just, just keep that in mind that sometimes there's a little bit more to it. Just do as much research as you can. And sometimes that research involves just trying things out for yourself. So yeah, just food for thought. All right. So the very last thing that I'm going to share with you today is something that I definitely wish I would have known when I first got this machine and that I think is very important for anyone that has a plan to or thinks they might eventually plan to make things to sell them. And that is to make sure you practice, practice, practice before you start to sell. And that is strictly because, okay, so everyone has to start somewhere, right? And maybe you're the one in a million where it is completely perfect and flawless and you get everything the very first try. That's not me. I am not claiming that that is me whatsoever, but that's not always the case for everyone. And it takes practice to do things well using this machine. So, or using any machine, honestly, anything that you're hand making, practice first before you sell, because whatever product you start to sell, if there's anything wrong with it, if there is a design flaw or somebody uses it for a couple of weeks and then the design starts to, let's say adhesive vinyl, it was a detailed design and now it's starting to fall off or peel away. Practice, practice, practice before you start to do this because that can affect how your business looks if you're doing it like as a business. That can affect how your business looks down the line, if that makes sense. I'm not saying like I'm this to like scare you or anything, but just practice and make sure you've got the hang of it. Do tests, do um, like hand washing tests with designs at certain sizes. Learn to know when a font is too detailed or a design is too detailed or is too small because if you have stuff that is too small and you are putting it on a cup or a bottle or a mug, I'm telling you, even if it's permanent adhesive vinyl, eventually part of it is going to peel away. There's no getting around it. And I know like it, it might take a while, don't get me wrong, it might take a while, but it could happen. And those are things that I kind of had to learn the hard way. And I've come up with different ways of doing things now to avoid things like that. Or when I know there's no way around it that I have found yet anyways, I have chosen to move away from doing those types of things and um, doing something different in re like to replace that. So I used to do um, coffee mugs with adhesive vinyl on them. I, I don't like the thought of even a couple months down the road, part of the design coming off. Uh, so I choose not to do just vinyl on mugs anymore. And now I have introduced sublimation into my um, product line. So I do sublimation mugs instead of vinyl on mugs. It's not to say they can't do vinyl on mugs. I'm not trying to say that whatsoever. Not putting a bee in your bonnet. Um, hi, I'm 80 years old. <laughs> um, but yeah, I don't know. There's just... Just make sure you practice before you start promoting yourself. There is so, so many people that I have seen on like Facebook Marketplace and whatnot creating businesses after they have purchased a machine like yesterday and then immediately starting to sell products. I'm not trying to bring you down by any means. I just want you to have the best experience overall and obviously your clients to have the best experience overall. And uh, I, I just don't want anyone to be in a position where um, 
I don't know, something goes wrong and then you have that one client that's nasty about it and then that's something that sticks with you and you hold on to that like I would do if somebody was upset because one of my products didn't work out for them or something. I take that very heavily and seriously. So if you can avoid that just by practicing what you do, then that's the way to do it. Anyways, that is uh, enough heavy stuff for this video. I hope that this video encourages you to take your machine out of the box if you are intimidated by it. Even um, if it's been sitting in the box for a couple of years or if you just got it over the holiday season and uh, you're not quite sure what to do, take it out of the box. That's the first step. Watch as many videos as you can. Feel free to hit the subscribe button if you would like to join my crafty little journey. Become a foiled friend. I know that sounds corny, but uh, I, I started that a little while ago and uh, just sort of stuck. So uh, on my channel, I do lots more than just Cricut crafting. So if you are here specifically for Cricut crafting, I won't be heartbroken if you don't want to watch my other videos. But if you do, you might enjoy them. <laughs> I do things from sewing, foiling, Cricut crafting, just uh, dollar store DIYs, home reno DIYs. I do a little of this and a little of that. So um, I'm so excited that you are about to start your die cutting journey. And it, if it's with Cricut, awesome. This is not a sponsored video. I have never once been sponsored by Cricut. I'm just putting that out there, at least at the time of this video. Who knows? Maybe in the future. Cricut, hit me up. What up? Um, but uh, yeah, this is just me sharing my experience with you guys, hoping that it helps, hoping that it energizes you and uh, gets you motivated and a little less intimidated. You're going to be fine. I'm going to leave a link to the video when I first unboxed and did my first project with this and you can see the difference in how <laughs> intimidated I was to first use it and I'm sure that that will probably resonate with a lot of people watching this video. So anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you have an awesome day and that's all I'm going to say. Bye!